Hello everyone, I am Mecca, and here is my list of the favorite, my favorite top five shows that I remembered that I watched in 2022. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and now I do have to stress, this is in no particular order, this is just the order I remember them and I like them all about the same-ish, maybe some a little more than others, maybe some for different reasons than others, I can't categorize them, and feel free to comment, feel free to correct me feel free to say why did you exclude this why did you exclude that why did you exclude whatever show that I like please do please do because this is my list this is the list that I compiled and that's what these are for so you click them and tell me your list now we're gonna start with number five, my fifth favorite show that I watched this year. Should come as no surprise to anybody who's actually been following the channel. Resident Alien! It is a show where Alan Tudyk plays an alien that crash lands in a small town in Colorado, and it is hilarious. It's a fish out of water story. They're on season, what, two, three now, something like that. And it is one of the, the best examples of how you can have a show that is. Let's take a look at that nasty thing. Quote unquote woke, you can have diversity, you can have representation, you can take a property based off of a comic book, and you can still make quality entertainment, even with a couple of changes, even with a couple of little, I think there's changes, I don't know. It's one of those shows where you don't care if there are, because it's just that good. It's just that good. It is that engaging, is that entertaining, you care about these characters, you care about what happens. Good night, my sweet hairless monkey. To the town, you've got Mayor Snowflake and his wife and what they're up to. You have the sheriff and his deputy and what they're up to. You have the alien and his best buddy and what they're up to. And and then there's this little kid. His best buddy, of course, is Asta. And, and but but there's this little kid that you're like, all right, the alien hates the kid. I'm on board with it anyway. Fun, fun, adventure sort of alien fish out of water. It's a comedy. It's on sci-fi. And that is my number five. Number four, a series with so much talking. That's that's it. It's just people talking, having grown-up conversations about things. It's a family. Guess what family it is? It's the House of Dragons family. It's the Targaryens. Are they Targaryens? I think so. They're the white hair people from Game of Thrones. And it's so good. Oh, is it so good. It's mostly just grown up family. It feels like I'm watching the royal family. Only, only like a fictionalized version of the royal family, but I can be like, this is exactly how this member of the family must have felt with it, because I'm kind of a royal family of file. I know, I know, not everybody's gonna be, but that's one of the things I love about House of Dragons. I'm not usually one who really likes the the gore and the violence and the gross stuff and anything, you know, more than a G rating anymore in my old age PG, maybe an 80s PG, it should be perfectly honest. But House of Dragons can still incorporate modern television and and still get me on board in a way that I actually give a crap about the characters. Matt Smith is phenomenal. Every actor who has been in this has been phenomenal. And I can't recommend it more. It is so much better than Game of Thrones. It hits a lot of the same notes as Game of Thrones, but it does it in a more easily digestible way, I think. So I highly recommend it. That's my number four. Number three. The fifth season of one of my favorite TV shows of all time and one of my favorite franchises of all time. You guessed it, all the ass kickingest, most mind blowingly 80s fun retro. It's, it's Cobra Kai. You know it. You know it. Love Cobra Kai. Oh, and what they brought back with season five was some of my favorite characters from Karate Kid 2, like Chozen. And what I, I talked about this so much during my live stream. Definitely go check that out. Come hang out in the live streams. We can get a lot more in depth than this. Cobra Kai is doing exactly what most modern day television wishes they could. They're bringing in the old audiences from the 80s who grew up with the Karate Kid, like me like me, and they're taking it to this modern television level of incorporating a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that you see in modern day television, I'm not gonna lie, there's women in it, oh, and some people think that just having a woman in it makes it, makes it diverse, so sure, whatever. What they do with these characters though, how, how they can take somebody like Daniel, and showcase the fact that, yeah, he's kind of a weasel sometimes. Sometimes he isn't the bestest, most goody-two-shoes, good guy sort of character out there. 
And sometimes Johnny isn't like this one note bad guy sort of character. That is one of the things I love, love, love about Cobra Kai. And that is why it is number three on my list. Definitely check it out. Watch all the seasons if you're a huge Karate Kid fan. You're already watching Cobra Kai. You know it. You love it. This is what we're up against. Number two, the boys. The boys are back. You know, the boys. The boys I grew up with. The boys I identify as. Uh, what? My pronouns are Beavis and Butthead. That is right. Beavis and Butthead's back, and they've been just as good as they've always been. Whether it be up to mischief, whether it be now this new modern take on, and I hate saying it, this modern take on how they are now is fascinating and probably better than the flashback either teenager type of stuff watching TikTok videos. I like seeing how grown Beavis and Butthead react to stuff like now problems. Like Butthead is old and fat in a putt-putt scooter. I swear Beavis, if you're still alive, you're fired. And <laughs> Beavis has to take care of him. They're dealing with unemployment stuff. They're dealing with all of the stuff that grown adult loser people that they would turn into. But it's still hilarious and fascinating. And it's still Beavis and it's still Butthead. Stuart comes back. Stuart wets his bed. Da -da. Don't even get me started on what happens to the kidney for crying out loud. I don't want to spoil it. Watch Beavis and Butthead. If you're not watching Beavis and Butthead, the new ones check them out i mean what's it gonna hurt they're all over the internet beavis beavis is now a fan of bts this song kicks because of course he is <laughs> and and i already reviewed the movie as one of my top movies of the year and i probably will have to do that again but yes watch beavis and butthead it's all the same classic notes in a in a way that doesn't make you think it's modern day. Whose balls does he eat? In a way that doesn't make you think and be reminded that today's world is out there. So that's one of the things I love about modern day Beavis and Butthead. Step aside, please. We have white privilege. And before we get into the number one pick this year for the top five shows of 2022, I forgot how many I had on my list. I have a few honorable mentions. And here's the thing with the honorable mentions, all right? For whatever reason, I didn't quite feel they were good enough to be put on the list. Either they're canceled, they're kind of bad, or, or for whatever reason. So, here's my list in no particular order of my honorable mentions. First up, Strange New Worlds. I know, surprise! If not for the fact that this has Star Trek attached to it, this show wouldn't be that terrible. It has some dumb moments, it has some dumb writing. <laughs> Most shows do nowadays. It kind of reminds me of, of more of a Stargate type of show, something on the Sci-Fi channel. Something a little bit less, it, it really, really wants to be the Orville. Sorry to interrupt. It really, really, really wants to be the Orville and it's doing kind of a bad job at being the Orville. I think that went well. But it's also doing a bad job at being Star Trek. However, it's still kind of fun. It's not nearly as bad as Discovery. It's not nearly as bad as any of the other shows, in my opinion. Your opinion may differ. And so I have to put it as an honorable mention because it is so much better than Discovery, or less bad, I should say. So much less bad than Picard. And it is kind of a fun sit if you're not that attached to TOS. I love this job. If you're not that attached to the Star Trek lore, if you don't know the references they're screwing up, you can sit there and kind of enjoy parts of it. My second choice of honorable mention today is going to be Wednesday. I know, weird, huh? I enjoyed it for what it was. It wasn't 100% correct. There's a lot of nitpicks. There's a lot of issues, but... It's still pretty enjoyable, it's still pretty entertaining. Jenna Ortega is pretty decent as Wednesday. I do want to see them more incorporate the family, the Adams family into Wednesday, but I get it, it's not called that. Wednesday, the Wednesday show, honorable mention. And my last honorable mention, first kill. I know, it's so weird, but it was entertaining. It is such a bad show. It pushed over, it crossed the threshold of being bad to entertainingly bad. No! 
and not a lot of stuff does that. You usually you usually leave that for the MST3K style stuff, you know, the shows that you can kind of watch or the movies you can kind of watch and just sit there and pick on and riff. And that's kind of how First Kill was. It was so ridiculous. It was so out there. It was such a bizarre B-movie concept that I enjoyed the crap out of it. We didn't get around. Sorry, I got very, very ill when I was reviewing a lot of these. So I never got around to reviewing the last half of it, beat by beat by beat. But for a canceled, weird, stupid, bat crap, crazy, vampire, lesbian, doesn't know if it wants to be Buffy, doesn't know if it wants to be Romeo and Juliet, doesn't know if it wants to be Twilight, it was kind of fun. It was a fun sit in some places. It wasn't too boring. It was just so dumb. Oh, hi. Hi. that it was engaging, it was almost endearing at times. So those are my honorable mentions. And now, the moment you have all been waiting for, my number one pick. I'm as shocked as you are. The Surprise, surprise, I put it at number one. I don't know why I put it at number one, but I felt it deserved to be the number one position of the list because of the impact of Star Trek, because of the importance that Star Trek has placed on my life, because of my entire reason for this channel is because I went from playing video games one year to the next year, hey, Star Trek's terrible and Star Wars is bad. And what am I, what, what is going on with entertainment? Why is the world bad? Why is it all related? Why are we here? What are they? Why are they? What do they mean? Who are they? What are they? What does it mean? Jason eats balls. Hmm. Who is Jason? Whose balls does he eat? And all of the things. And the Orville is dealing with the grown-up adult Star Trek issues that Star Trek is in no way, shape, or form grown-up enough to take care of and tackle and understand. Star Trek is still trying to neener, 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 look how diverse we are with all of our pronoun people, and we gotta stop the episode nine times to tell you this person has a they-them pronoun. I would prefer they or them from now on. Meanwhile, the Orville is giving us this complex debate on whether or not AI is going to be mistreated in the future by humans who are creating it right now. Are we going to do what these people did to the robots? Are the robots and the and the Kalon the bad guys? Or can we incorporate a friendship with these people? Do we trust our enemy or will our enemies align? And they're doing it in a way that Star Trek would never be able to do with the writing team that they have now. Granted, I haven't seen what's coming for season three of Picard. I'm hearing it's going to be good, but you know what? You've burned me so many times before with Star Trek. That's for the worst list, and I, I guarantee there will be at least a Star Trek in name only series appearing on the worst list from me. Are you watching the Orville? Was it too woke for you? I want to know because it wasn't necessarily too woke for me. However, I did state when I was reviewing it that as good as it was, I might not want that as my entertainment all the time. I am Mecca and did you agree with my list? Did you disagree with my list? What shows did I miss? Please comment in the section below and I will have my worst list coming really, really soon. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe! See you in the next video! Bye! Who is Jason? Why does he eat balls? Whose balls does he eat?